Hello, good morning, good evening, whenever you have set aside a nice chunk of time to do this. It is only, I want to say, 30 minute yin practice. Um, but I want you to have totally like the full, luxurious 30 minutes to focus on yourself. We got a special guest star today, Taro Bun Flower. Okay, for today's movement, we are moving with the menstrual phase. You know, we've gone throughout this week. We start follicular phase with our little dance, uh, ovulatory phase with our cardio, full body workout, luteal phase with Hope and her amazing Pilates. And now we close out with a bit of yin yoga. If you've never heard of yin yoga before, it is something very different to your normal, like flowy in and out of vinyasa class. In yin, we only do a couple of poses um, and we hold them for like two to five minutes. So instead of flow, much more stagnant. And the goal here is that we stay in the poses long enough so that your body can naturally open up into that deep connective tissue. So we're going past the muscle and hitting the fascia, which is that connective tissue in between the muscles. You've heard of yin and yang before. This is feminine versus masculine energy. So I've brought it up a few times throughout this challenge, the idea of incorporating more feminine energy into our lives where we are really focused on the journey more than the end goal. We are receiving more than we are giving. Um, less of that like I must do and more of a like, let's sit with this moment. when you chew on a root. During yin yoga, while we're sitting in those poses for what can feel like a good long amount of time, it turns into this receiving energy because it's not about you like muscling your way to fit into a pose. It's about getting into the feeling of what you're supposed to be stretching and then finding stillness and then going to be gravity that just kind of naturally helps you settle into the pose so that you start to feel things deeper. And then we've also got the ground underneath us. So it's like gravity and the ground are working to bring you into what the pose is meant to look like for your body. And there's nothing that we have to do in that moment. We are just receiving the stretch and the opening of our body. Because we hold the poses for a much longer time, this is where the challenge of yin yoga comes. So you're not gonna be sweating like crazy or anything like that, but this is a challenging practice because we have to be comfortable getting uncomfortable and sitting with our present feelings instead of starting to like zone out and disassociate we need to stay with our bodies so that we can check is there any pain happening is there any, am i putting too much pressure somewhere it's really on you to look out for yourself when people first start doing yin you'll be like two minutes into a pose and you're like all right are we done can we be done now and listen, if you are in pain, that is a sign to back off. But if you can just sit with that uncomfortable stillness and silence of the mind for a little bit past what you think you can, because your brain is gonna start going like, no, I can't, no, I, <laughs> I'm walking. But your body is actually capable of so much more. Sometimes when the mind starts to feel uncomfortable or we're just, we as a whole are presented with an uncomfortable situation it's going to be our mind first that is like get me the fuck out of here if we instead choose to let our body take the lead you'll see you are capable of so much more than you could have ever imagined to do this workout with me you're going to need some comfy clothes to stretch in a yoga mat to protect the knees and Great to have a pillow. We love a prop in yin. It's going to help us feel what we want to feel with the yoga pose. This session is all about feeling. It's nothing to do with how you look. It's nothing to do with you needed extra help or something from a prop. No, all we care about is that we hit the target feeling. So I'll be walking you through the entire practice and with each pose, I'll be telling you like what general area we want to be opening up in a little bit of like physical guidance but mostly just you finding that feeling for yourself if you need to gather all those things just pause the video oh and last thing that you need is your phone to play the playlist same story as last time i cannot play the music that i want to play on youtube and i just find music to be such 
an important part of me enjoying my workout experience, I want to give you guys the same thing. Um, so I've got the playlist sent if you're part of the challenge. It is in your email. I'll also link it below and you just put that either in a separate tab or on your phone, whatever, and I will count you in and that's when our practice will begin. So pause if you need to get anything, otherwise we are going to get it started. KF menstrual phase yin playlist up and we'll press play in three, two, one. Before getting into the poses, we will breathe as a collective. I know you guys aren't with each other, but how cool that it ended up being 120 people in the challenge. It's going to stay open, so more might join. Um, but yeah, 120 of you just breathing together for a moment. I feel like that's powerful. So find yourself a comfortable seat and we are going to get into our breath. Maybe you are cross legs, maybe you're on your knees if that feels okay. You can also sit on the pillow if you wanna open up the hips a little bit more. Oh, that, that's comfy. <laughs> and now I'd like you to stay with your hands on your lap. Take a nice inhale through the nose, strong. Hold it at the top. And exhale equally strong, feeling yourself release into this practice. Empty it all out. Next inhale. Hold it at the top. And exhale, let it all go out. Imagine you're stripping yourself of all the thoughts of the day or the night that is behind you now. And we are here in this moment, sharing our breath. Last inhale. Hold it at the top, maybe take a sip more of air through your mouth. Let it ruminate. And exhale, you can let it all go, starting to find your own comfortable breath. The breath is going to be the movement for this practice. We are staying still in the poses, but our breath is constantly flowing in and out helping us stay present and helping us get deeper into each pose. All right. Now, I would like you to have the pillow in front of you at the top of your mat. We're going to come into child's pose. But before we just dive into it, I want to set you up so that you're really comfortable, your spine is protected, and you can just let it all go knowing that you are doing what you need to do. So you decide where the knees are. The closer they are to you, the more we're going to get that front of thigh stretch, whereas if we take it out a little bit wider, this is going to get into our hips. So I'd like a hip stretch. I'm going to keep my knees wide. And then pillow is like in between the thighs or if you have the knees together it's at the top of the knees and we'll just walk ourselves down so stop midway to just stabilize that lower spine making sure that your back is comfortable not straining in any way and when you feel like this lower half of you is like properly set up and you're feeling either your hip or your thighs opening then we're just gonna fall all the way down to the pillow. And that feels good. <laughs> okay. 
Now you stay in the pose. I'm just coming up to guide you. Depending on whether you have chosen to open up the thighs or the hips, make sure that you feel it. That is called our target area in yin. So once you're really feeling your target area, you don't need to make any other adjustment. You are comfortable where you are. And then we're going to come to stillness. The breath is still moving, but your body is like as still as you can be for this moment. If I said stillness and you immediately feel the need to itch your nose or like shake something out, I would like you to sit with that thought for just a couple of seconds before you like don't immediately go to do the thing. Sit with the thought and if your nose is still itchy after like 15 seconds then you can go ahead and itch it but otherwise I want you to see if you can just kind of like let that reactive thought kind of just pass through you. Feel yourself growing heavier as you stay in the child's pose. You can close your eyes if that helps you come closer to your body. But now we are going to move on to our next position. So I'd like you to just make the hands a little bit more active on the ground and use the hands to help walk you up the same way we came into the poses. Now we get out, you're back on your knees. And you close that up. And we will come to lie flat on our back. So just roll out into like your sleep position on the mat to move the pillow out of the way so you're completely flat on your back you can stay down there we'll get up to guide you in between each yoga pose in yin we do this thing called a rebound where we just lay down on the mat and we give ourselves the opportunity to see how did that feel in my body so this is your moment to just check in with either the thighs or the hips and just be like does anything feel different? Do I feel better? Do I feel worse? And take that into account as you continue moving throughout the practice. Slowly make your way to a tabletop position. So we're just on our hands and knees. Extend the right leg behind you. And then we're going to take the knee down to that right wrist and start to bring the foot forward as well. And slide the left leg back straight. While we're doing a more yang practice, this pose is called pigeon pose. Um, but in yin, we like it a little girly, a little more feminine, and it is called sleeping swan. So it's really not that important how far up your foot is or that anything's in a certain position. The thing that I want you to focus on is that this, mus like this area right here from your bun, <laughs> bun, from your bum to your knee, the IT band, the side of your leg up to your bum, that is your target area. That's where you want to feel it. So first we stabilize. You've got the right knee forward, left leg back. And again, taking your hands to walk you forward. If you want to use the pillow in this pose, you're just going to take that right in front of you, same as we did with the child's pose, so that your head is able to rest on it. Or you can shoot this like behind your bum if you're not all the way flat to the ground so that it's less uh, like, it feels like less of a force on this back hip. 
start to walk this one down. And fully fall into the pose. Also, if you want to keep your hands up and stay here, fine. You can come onto your elbows or you can go all the way down or you can be using that pillow as the place that you rest. And this is meant to just feel so lovely with that pillow coming in, especially because this is a really tight area of our bodies, or like it can be just the way that we move through life most of the time. And <laughs> I remember doing this pose in my yoga teacher training and just being like, fuck this guy. And just pure anger surging up inside of me. Like I wanted to throw the yoga block at my teacher's head. <laughs> and I come out of it and I'm like, where did that come from? And the thing is that it's usually the hips, the shoulders, the back, the jaw, where we store trauma, tension, old emotions that haven't been rinsed out yet, and targeting our bodies in this deep way that yin does, some of those things can come to the surface. So if you're feeling any type of way, a reminder, you can always come back to child's pose. It's where we usually feel safe. Um, you can back out and just come to like lie down. You can feel fully free to like let out whatever emotion comes forward, whether it's tears or a yell or just some sacred feminine rage, whatever you need. Just, this is why I can't have you drifting off with your thoughts of the day. This is why we need to stay with our body because only you are going to know how to take care of yourself in this moment. And I'm not even with you, so it's really up to you. We're going to come out of the sleeping swan, similar to the child's pose, where you take your hands, walk yourself up, take the right leg back so you're in tabletop again, and now switch it out. So left leg long, bring it down to the left knee. Find that target area, bum to knee. Once you feel like, okay, I'm activating it, <laughs> that is where we will walk down, slowly coming to your comfort point with the arms. In case you've gotten away from it, take a nice deep inhale. Feel your spine and that back leg growing a little bit longer. And exhale to fall deeper into the pose. The ground has got you, you're not going anywhere. And then find your stillness. I think I'm going to join you for the rest of this one because it honestly felt so good.
bring your hands flat to the ground and use them to help walk you out of pose. Coming back to tabletop in the easiest way possible. You can move that pillow out of the way and we're going to come to lie flat on our stomach for our rebound. Make a little pillow. You can either use your actual pillow or you can make a pillow with your hands stacked on top of each other, elbows out wide, and just let your head rest to one side or maybe forehead down. And it feels good. Remember, this is your moment to check in with yourself. What emotions were coming up for you? Was it difficult to stay in this present moment? Were your thoughts drifting somewhere else? We're two poses in. How is your body feeling? help you walk up. I'm just gonna roll over our knees. Sorry about the siren. I don't know what to say. Not a profession. <laughs> Let the legs come out long in front of you. Spine nice and tall. Ooh, sorry legs. We are going to do like a forward fold. Um, it's called the caterpillar and yin. And what we're looking for is uh, a stretch in our hamstrings if we're keeping the legs uh, more on the straighter side. But we're also looking for a stretch in our spine. So if you feel like your spine is really compromised and this is a tight pose for you, I would definitely recommend bending the knees so that your chest can come closer to your thighs. And of course, we can take our pillow in here to help us out. So, <laughs> pillow comes to lie right on top of the legs, hands up on the inhale, and exhale to fall forward towards your feet, wherever you land. If the back feels really strained, bent knees. This isn't meant to hurt at any point. You will feel the target area, but it shouldn't be painful. And you can tell the difference between pain and like a stretching sensation because pain is usually there's one point and you're like, oop, like you can, it's just such a direct hit. Whereas the sensation is gonna be more of like a broad general, like you would feel it through your whole back instead of just being like, oop. So make sure that you're hitting stretching to your to the edge. You want to get to the edge of your body because that's how we grow. You're hitting stretching, not pain. If there's pain, you back off. Enjoy the pose. Keep the breath strong, deep inhale, equally deep exhale. Roll the spine up, vertebrae by vertebrae, shoulders and head, the last to come up. 
and just fall down to our back for a rebound. Okay, from here I would like you to take both of your knees towards your chest. Spine should feel super comfortable right now, just laying flat on the mat. And we're going to come into easy twist. So let both of your knees fall down to the left side, stacked on top of each other. Not that it needs to look a certain way, but that that top leg is supported by the bottom. You're letting the right shoulder Come down towards the mat, extend it behind you. Maybe you take your gaze over the right shoulder if you want to involve the pillow. Okay. You can bring it underneath the legs. You can even do it between the legs. I'm gonna like this. That is so cool. Our target area is the upper body, the shoulders, we are opening up all, we're undoing what gets done in a day of sitting over your computer or your phone, this is the antithesis of that. Having the shoulder on the ground, that right shoulder on the ground, is going to protect your spine and keep you from injury in your upper back. So instead of being really focused on getting the knees towards the ground, like if you can't do that, that's when the pillow comes underneath. Because we want to have like the full chest glued or back, full upper back glued to the floor. So whatever helps you do that. feel tension coming up anywhere in your body, try to let it melt away, knowing that you don't have to hold on to that. Return to your back. Knees are towards the chest, and then we just let them fall over to the right side now. Moving mindfully, this time we make sure that the left shoulder is glued down to the mat, let the left arm come long behind you, and gaze is over the left shoulder. You can feel it all up here in that upper body, the back and front of your upper body opening up. Relax your jaw. Relax the face completely. You have this moment to focus on nothing except 
making your body feel good. Turn to your back. Let the pillow fall to your side. Feel those knees are squeeze towards your chest and then let your legs fall down for our rebound. <sighs> Hands can be on your belly or lying by your side, either palms up or down. Whatever helps you feel the most connected to your body in this moment. A rebound is the perfect moment to send your breath to whatever is still feeling tight at this point. So if those shoulders are a little bit sore still after our twist, just imagine an inhale going right to that upper body, creating more space for movement. My favorite song and my favorite pose. Use your hands to gently help you peel your back up off of the mat as we get into this pose. Bend the knees. Take the soles of the feet so that they're together. So it's like this. And we're going to get that pillow behind our back. is all the way up to your bum. Maybe put it on its side for a deeper opening. Let your back come to the ground. So basically the pillow is like lined up with your spinal cord. And then we're gonna let the knees fall to the sides. This is called supine butterfly, and it is <laughs> heaven on earth. <laughs> what are you doing? Close your eyes, lean back, and enjoy gravity doing its thing, just melting those shoulders down, opening up your heart space. Also got our hips opening up. Remember anything tight, you can visualize your inhales, sending the breath to those spaces, creating more openness in your body. It helps, it really does.
this is our last pose of the day. So even if it has been challenging throughout the rest of the practice, I would like you to make this one count. Make this the pose that you stay in your body, that you check in with yourself. Let's finish with the energy that we want to take into the rest of our day or evening. Connected so deeply to ourselves. That was one of you. <laughs> you're going to use your hands to help bring your knees back together like you're closing a book. Then bring the hands down to the mat and peel yourself off of your pillow. You can remove the pillow completely. We're going to come to Shavasana, so lying flat down on the mat, taking up as much space as you please, like let the legs go wide, let the arms go wide. You are big, as big as you want to be. And, oh, dad. <laughs> just lost some hair. Um, you don't need to be following what I'm doing anymore. You don't need to have any type of breath. You are just you in your body during Shavasana. Totally restful. I'm going to leave you here, but I want you to stay for the rest of the song. Because... We just deserve this moment of peace. Unfortunately, my iPhone data is questionable at best, so I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna say goodbye. But thanks for moving with me.